what's going on everybody i hope you're doing fantastic as always we are going to be starting our unreal engine 5.3 tutorial series with this video so the first thing we're going to want to do is go ahead and make sure you have it downloaded i already have it downloaded but you can do that at epicgames.com and go ahead in the top right and press download that will download the epic games launcher which you can pull up well, uh, you'll probably have to create an account go ahead and do that and then instead of the store or library where you see their video games you're just gonna go down here to unreal engine now you won't have it installed yet you probably have to go over here to library and then hit this little plus and make sure you install five point whatever the latest is i believe it's 5.3.2 um and you can install older versions and whatnot just keep in mind uh these engines are fairly huge like just 5.3 is 60 gigs and then my uh plugins are another 60 gigs and it gets pretty big pretty quickly uh like no joke so just keep that in mind put it on a drive where you have plenty of space and you'll be fine all right so we're gonna go ahead and assume that you downloaded it and installed it just fine so the next thing we're gonna do is just hit launch and this will bring up our basically like the main menu of the program where we can create projects, open projects, and that kind of thing. So you can see here we already have a few projects. Uh, we're going to go ahead and ignore these. And we can go down here to games. What these are is uh, like pre-settings for what you're going to build. It doesn't necessarily matter. You can change it later. Uh, but it does make things a little easier if you know what you're doing um, ahead of time. So let's say we wanted to build, we're going to be using third person. I'll go ahead and tell you that. We'll be using third person for hours. But if you wanted to build like a first person shooter game, it might be more convenient to use the first person template. Again, it doesn't really matter. So let's go over here. We'll name this YouTube. YouTube tutorial. Why well, can't I spell this morning? There we go. Ooh, that was a challenge. All right. Uh, you can pretty much just ignore the project defaults over here. We're gonna leave them the same. But let's actually, yeah, let's throw in starter content. Normally that's auto checked. I'm not sure why it wasn't. Um. So yeah, we'll have starter content, third person, create. All right, so we have our uh, IDE or integrated developer, the uh, editor, development editor open. Ooh, there is a lot to go uh, over here. We are not gonna touch about 90% of it because you won't really need to normally unless you're trying to do something specific. Um, and it would just be too much information to absorb all at once. So we'll go over some of the basic things you're going to need just to play around and go from there. So WASD is your uh, movement when you're holding right click. If you hold down right click on your mouse, you can WASD to move around. Um, let's see, these buttons up here are pretty important. Uh, they're very similar to Unity. You can set uh, how much objects move when you go to move them. So you can see here it's kind of snapping. You can change how much it snaps right here. Uh, the units, so like one, it's going to be a lot more smooth. Or you can completely turn off the snapping by just clicking the blue button and then it's smooth, completely smooth. And that works the same way for rotation or scaling, um, pretty much those. <clears throat> now what you can also do is adjust your camera speed up here. 
So you can see I was zipping around the map really quick, and now I'm going like a snail's pace. And now I'm going quicker. So that's kind of basic movement controls and how to move objects. <clears throat> and when I say objects, what I mean is they're called actors in Unreal Engine. Uh, but if you're familiar with object-oriented programming, actors are generally treated as objects, and it's just a hard thing for me not to say objects. Alright, so we have our ability to move. Let's talk about how to add more objects. And if your screen doesn't exactly look like mine, don't freak out. You can move things around by drag and dropping them wherever you want. So you can um, snap it to what's comfortable for you. And I want this up here. Go up here. Whatever, it's there now. Alright, so control space is very useful. This is your content drawer, which is the silly name. We're just going to call this our file explorer. It's basically Windows Explorer for your project. This is where everything that you create, import, work with, uh, scripts, objects, maps, everything will exist here for you to access. Obviously right now we don't have a ton of stuff. A uh, third person file would contain all of the um, third person starter content. So for example, here's like the dummy character. And you can see they have a camera attached to them and all that stuff. Easier we can hit the green play button and that go ahead goes ahead and lets us actually get in the editor as a playing client. So let's say this is your full game. This is actually how it would play if you were inside of it, which is pretty cool. You can hit escape to close that. And you can go over to the little, it's called ham, triple dot or hamburger. And you can go over here and hit the new editor pie window if you want that to open in a different window and not your editor window. Now I'm going to go ahead and permanently put this content browser so I don't have to hit control space to bring it up, just down here. That's what's comfortable for me. And yeah, so that's, uh, that's how I'm going to do that. Let's talk about scalability. So you can see it says scalability low up here. And what that is, that's actually like your video settings. So if we go over to the top right, hit settings, go down to engine scalability settings, we can adjust uh, what video settings basically we want it to run in the editor. And this is super useful if you're running OBS and Unreal, or if you just don't want to stress your computer over graphics while you're playing with trying to make a square square. So that's very, very useful. Uh, another important button is this quickly add to the project. This is like your basic, basic stuff. Uh, we have player starts here. So you can see we already had one, but if we have two, it will choose a random spawn location when you a player spawns or starts into the map slash game. We can also have other things here like lighting, cubes, different shapes, uh, cameras for different things, following characters, or creating uh, like opening cinematics. You know, you can do your visual effects. Pretty much anything you want to do basic, we can do here. Now those are our main functionality controls. The one important thing we haven't talked about is the outliner. What the outliner is, is all of the objects that make up a map. So this would be our map. Everything inside the map would be uh, everything we're looking at right now on the screen, besides the blue. 
everything that makes this up exists right here. So if we wanted to change this cube, we find it right here. Find the cube, go to details of that cube, and then we can change the mesh, we can change the size of it, we can change the rotation. Um, pretty much everything to do with that object can be changed in the details here. That's pre-configured options. So these are all, somebody coded these already. We don't have to change any code to adjust this value. It's just a scalar value or an integer in some cases. Like for mass, it's at 35 kilograms. We can just put that up to 100. It doesn't require us to do very much work, which is very nice. We can change the collisions. Pretty much most of the options you're gonna wanna mess with uh, that aren't super custom are already already exist right here under the details tab. <clears throat> well that is probably enough information to get started. Uh, the next thing we're gonna cover is actually assets and let me actually before we end this video let me show you kind of something else so basically the next things we're going to be going over since that kind of covers how to create your first project uh, are things like assets and you know what i mentioned that briefly but what we'd be talking about is kind of how and where you obtain things to make a full on game as you can see here like i didn't make all these objects i'm not a graphic or object 3d modeler graphic designer or 3d modeler sorry uh, but there are places where you can get AAA assets completely for free uh, we'll be talking about that we'll be talking about uh kind of a bunch of more stuff and kind of get you on your way to developing your first game i hope you guys enjoyed the video uh drop a like comment subscribe check out my patreon if that's something you'd be interested in uh you know everything goes towards making more videos and game development of this game i'm gonna be talking more about in the future I also patreon will be more relevant for you guys in the future if you just want straight up uh, plug and play code snippets for things as I'll be working more with blueprints on there and releasing blueprints onto Patreon and we'll talk more about what blueprints are in Unreal as well later. But that is probably more than enough information to get you guys on your way to setting up your first project and installing Unreal Engine. I keep saying Unreal Tournament almost, not the same. And uh, I'll catch you guys in the next video.